So, hey everybody. <sighs> All right. So, I hear about the cytokine storm. I hear when on, like when I go on YouTube and I listen to these doctors and they're talking about the cytokine storm. Then you hear the, the different politics around the anti-V world and they're talking about the cytokine storm. Um, even when I was listening to all the different uh, YouTube influencers, uh, when the, the COVID-19 first started out, I heard, I always hear about cytokine storm, cytokine storm, cytokine storm. I'm like, okay. And, you know, everyone has their opinions, but then the universal assumption on both the for and against for the therapies, as well as the general knowledge out there is that the cytokine storms are something to be afraid of. Cytokine storms are something that you need to avoid, you need to suppress, you need to inhibit, you need to prevent a cytokine storm. And you know how storms are, I mean, they're pretty aggressive. I mean, you look outside and there's there's clouds coming and tornadoes and hurricanes and all that stuff. And so we already have this, already always listening about storms, is that they are nothing to mess with and they're very highly energetic and you don't want to be in the path of anything when a storm is brewing. Okay, I get it, I get it. Now remember, the J-Juice also develops cytokine storm. Well, how is that? Jillian, it's not antibiotic. Oh, no, it's not antibiotic. Because a cytokine storm is something that you already hold within, and you're also, it, it will, you already hold within, but it's been activated by some aggressive entities out there, like the 29 different proteins that were activated in the COVID-19 that started off in China somewhere and then it jumped from person to person and every single time it jumped from person to person it became stronger and stronger. That's why it was so aggressive when it came all the way over here. I mean, you saw the videos in China, people were like falling over and passing out in the street, but then you also know the blood types have a lot to do with why some people have a more adverse reaction to a viral exposure than other people. And so when I was doing my research about who is getting more, well, who is more susceptible to um, adverse reactions and then not surviving a cytokine storm were those who are blood type A and B, who probably didn't have a lot of substance to them. And since I traveled China, you know, the, the southern portion where it was mostly hot and tropical, and they they eat like the dim sum and the steamed the steamed stuff so people were less substance to their body so imagine having a, a really aggressive virus that had a bunch of different proteins that you have no idea where they came from how it was even developed okay and then so many people were exposed and just couldn't survive it. And there's different blood types in China, but I also know that certain parts of China didn't have don't have as much of the of the substance, so it's gonna be harder for them to adapt or survive something as aggressive as that. But then northern China, it's heavier stock. You know, they they have more of the Panda Express food, the the heavy sauces, and and so and it also snows in northern China. And so you have to have a different physiological makeup to deal with the elements and then most likely could survive something as aggressive as COVID. I'm sure people still succumb to it on some level, but it was mostly the Southern Chinese that had the issue because that's kind of where it came out of. I think it was Wuhan, which is in the Southern province. I'm not sure if it's Guangzhou or not. And I've been to Guangzhou, so I, I know those provinces and I know how, uh, how destitute in some areas are. And so then I think about the cytokine storm here and you hear what the doctors talk about. It. Everyone's like afraid of the cytokine storm. And, and even with the J-Juice, they had to deal with the cytokine storm. And that's because everything is being activated by something highly aggressive, highly energetic, like a virus that has multiplied and mutated and had stuff add to it because of all the different therapies and whatever. And so now you have something that's so aggressive that's going to wake up everything that was asleep. And so there are six different 
mechanisms that are behind a cytokine storm that you don't want to be suppressing if you do, if you want to live indefinitely. If you're so afraid of a cytokine storm, whether it's from the J-juice, as you're doing J-juice, you're preempting your cytokine storm in a measured way and you're expecting to feel stuff. If you, don't, if you keep inhibiting that, you'll deal with it later. But if you want to deal with the cytokine storm, you have to understand the mechanisms behind it. It's not just like the... Um, something that is uh, attacking because we know we have a perception about T cells and B cells that are like attack natural killer T cells and all that stuff. Yes, some of the natural killer T cells, when they activate, they have a specific program to be inflammatory. No, I'm sorry, anti-inflammatory. And so they're attacking and they're eating, okay? And so that's an activation. Now, just because it's activating, you don't know what's being activated. You don't know if something is being activated to go and eat something that's programmed to eat, or it's activating to be suppressed and allowing the other side, the growth, happen. Okay? And so when you have something like the AIDS virus, okay, that's activating people, and that's part of a cytokine storm if it's part of your genetic makeup and what you hold inside. And maybe also something that you catch out there, but most likely it's stuff that you already hold inside. Then the, the, the AIDS virus actually eats the T-cells. So it eats your immunity to then you, where you have infection and other types of issues that you have so much inflammation or not enough and then things grow and it's just, you, you don't have an immune system, so you're, you see what happens to AIDS patients. They don't survive, and they get all these different rashes, and they waste away to nothing. And people watch their loved ones back in the 1980s succumb to AIDS because their whole immune system has been, was decimated by that virus. So you have activation, then you had adhe adhesion. Adhesion is when things stick together. And that's part of the whole positive and negative. It's actually kind of probably even connected to the migration, which is another word of the cytokine storm. Migration is we have a heavy negative, a higher density, heavy negative charge than the further and the faster the protein is able to go and travel and migrate. And that has to do with uh, anion and cation, and which is how things bond together positive and negative charges. Cation, which is like the salt, is like a positive charge, and anion is a negative charge. And some of these anti-inflammatories that are programmed in the T cells have a high, high negative charge, okay? So that's the, that's the adhesion and the migration. And then you have the differentiation, which is the distinction. Distinction is where things are being divided. They're being distinct. And so then you have cell division, differentiation, which is the opposite of extinction, which is things disappearing, okay? So that's differentiation. And then you have proliferation. Things are being dispersed. You could have cell regeneration be dispersed. Cell proliferation is all relative to what the cell's programmed to do, okay? So, and, and then the maturation, the maturity of the cell. What does that mean? Does it grow older? Does it, I mean, mature is when it, when it gets reached to a mature age. And so maybe it does accelerate somebody's maturity. When you think about these kids that don't look like kids anymore when they're a certain age, you're like, whoa, the, the <laughs> kids today don't look 13. They look like 17, 18, 19. Well, that's because of, of the different cytokines that are going on because of all the different things swimming around in their body as well as out there have increased maturation in their cells and yes they are aging they're aging or they're maturing faster and so are some people are aging quicker and so cytokine storms you don't want to suppress them but people do because they're so afraid of them yeah people die from cytokine storms you see it in the elderly okay so when people get an activation to their immune system based upon whatever triggers and you can blame all the different triggers everyone does they have their specific thing they speculate was what caused this person to die but um when someone's immune system gets gets activated by a virus crowd of people
by a therapy that uh, was misdiagnosed by a doctor or whatever. That's the cytokine storm and some people don't survive it. They get such an aggressive activation sequence that it then strangulated their ability to breathe or clogged up arteries and capillaries or you know they had a heart attack and stroke same thing or brain aneurysm or they drowned in their own mucus and so you've heard all the horror stories about the elderly who don't survive the cytokine storms okay well we know the elderly are going to be compromised the storm is coming and we know that the storm is going to happen every single fall you you got to know that every single fall that's cold and flu season and so you're gonna have to prepare the elderly to be completely sequestered as soon as it hits August, September, you know that's not going to happen. But that's what you what you got to do if you want to protect your your elderly is is you don't see your your grandma and your grandpa because I'm telling you with everything mutating and everything is in such a crazy chaotic viral soup, the cytokine storms become so aggressive as things keep adding to the cesspool of stuff because now people are taking their masks off, they're all hanging out. But those that are relatively like like me and you, if you guys are watching this and you've done maybe the J-Juice, you're not too obese, you're not too underweight, where you're dealing with some major health, sh health issues, you want to deal with the cytokine storm because that's the inflammation, that's the expression of whatever needs to be expressed. And it could be some kind of allergy that, uh, that you need to get rid of. But what happens is when people have certain like food allergies or other allergies, like, you know, environmental allergies or plant allergies or pollen allergies, they use Claritin, they use all these different immune suppression. And so they never get rid of that little microbe, that, that, that grouping of, of microbes that are causing them to react when uh, they get a, they might get a breakthrough infection. So yeah, so the Claritin doesn't work anymore. Now you're going to Allegra. And so you're always switching from one drug to another. And so when you get a breakthrough infection from something that is aggressive as COVID and you're relatively healthy, you got to let, you got to let it express. Now that's definitely counterintuitive and counter counterintuitive to the medical holistic energy healing world, because they're always trying to stop it with rife machines, with, with whatever they get their hands on the energy, the crystals, whatever, and, and, and or antibiotics remedies and, and, and detoxes essential oils and all that stuff but if you want to survive this you cannot keep pushing back and inhibiting the the cell the gene expression just call it gene expression and they know there's so many therapies that in that inhibit gene expression and there are T cell regulators and T cell expressors and they all are relative to how, they're, they're all program relative to the intention and and so you don't know what you have inside what you're holding inside as far as the allergies and you don't know what kind of uh, therapies and anything else that you hold from people that you've been exposed to or whatever you've done in the past and so you don't want to keep suppressing your immune system you got to let it express because no matter what you keep taking remedies against your environment you're holding that stuff in and it will cannibalize you because you're not letting it release. See, when you do the J-juice, you're going to go through some version of a cytokine storm. When you get exposed to a new virus that's so influential, you'll have some version of the cytokine storm. Some people do get heart attacks. Some people do get strokes. But if you know how to respond to all the different symptoms with food, not with using a cure, because remember, cures are deadly. But we respond to every single symptom with food. And you understand the power of salt water. You understand the power of the jelly juice. You understand the power of probiotics. And all the food supply with no discrimination. And if you really feel that you need something to suppress your gene expression, then you go see a doctor to suppress your gene expression. That's what doctors are licensed to do is to suppress your genetic expression because you don't want to feel the prostaglandins. You don't want to feel the pain, the agonist antibodies, as well as the antagonist antibodies. But let's even take it even 
to more scientifically, you don't want to feel the T cell regulation or the expressors. And so that's what the doctors and the nurses and all the different therapeutics are for is to suppress genetic expression. And it's FDA approved, so it's not poison. But then you got to know that you are surrounded by people who are trying to suppress their genes on so many therapies and then you're breathing it in. And so then when you're taking therapies against, like you're being immunized against your environment through the people around you, well, guess what happens every time you see them? Guess what happens when every time you, you see your friends, you see your family, you if you're immunized against COVID, who's the carrier of COVID? It's people around you. And so then what happens is, is then, you keep the storm keeps brewing all the time at some point you know you want to have the storm to go th you go through the storm for a certain amount of time and you feel it because you know it's there and it get it and it gets expressed and you know how to feed it okay and you're and you're resting and you're relaxing you're not overdoing it but what people do with there is they, they, they do stuff to suppress their genes so they don't feel anything, but they're still taking on people's microbes. It's still activating their immune system. They're still building up T cells and B cells. Maybe they don't feel pain because they're under other types of therapies. And so then you're collecting the, 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 the excessive production of your T cells and B cells. Like you're taxing your immune system to such an extent. And you know, if people were releasing, they would feel the pain. They wouldn't be taking the therapies if they were releasing, right? Because you know, when people start releasing, they feel the pain. You knew it with the J-Juice, cytokine storm versions of it, because you were releasing all those little T cells and B cells that were programmed for various reasons that were leaving your body and then you were feeling relief. You were feeling a clarity of thought. But, but, but people aren't doing that. They're taking all their therapies, whatever they are, curing themselves or programming their immune system to attack anything that has a certain programming that is sanctioned through the FDA. Okay, again, it's not poison, but you're not releasing it. Because if you were releasing it in a way that it's not gonna work against you, you'd feel the pain, you'd have the mucus. You'd have a lot of infection because you already hold other predispositions that you never wanted to deal with because that's the nature of who you are if you're taking a therapeutic. Even if you feel something on that therapeutic, it's not releasing at the level that you need to, to recalibrate your, um, your body so you're not revisiting old issues. That's the thing people like, oh yeah, I, I either didn't feel anything from a therapeutic or I felt a little bit or I was sick for a couple days. You hear all the different stories of how people react to therapeutics. And I see people on Facebook, oh yeah, I got this and I didn't feel anything. It was just a prick and that was it. Okay. I'd be concerned because you're collecting those T cells and B cells. As soon as you go out there in public, and someone holds those specific algorithms that are inside that programming. Now your immune system is triggered. No, you're not going to feel it. Oh, and if you do, you might feel a little like, ooh, you know, but you're not releasing. People get sick, but they're not releasing. Just because you get sick, yeah, okay, it's a little bit of release. But when you get a major sickness, that's a lot of release. People don't want to feel sick. Remember, it gets in the way of their life. That's the whole thing about sickness is that I have to remember too with my dog. She's now building herself back up to the environment. She went from all the way from being like she was skinny when we got her. And then she has predisposition. She has the hormones that were bred into her at the time that she was, you know, bred, I guess, at the time, whatever. And... So I was feeding her regular food, giving her, you know, my people food, whatever. And, and she was gaining weight. She had skin issues and allergies and fur was coming out. And, and it was, and she had really just weird skin and it was always blotchy. And she had like little, little cysts and all that stuff. 
And then finally I gave her some of the J juice. She was releasing stuff. She was feeling the pain from hip dysplasia and all that stuff. And so she gained a bunch of weight. Then she lost a little bit. She became rather okay, you know, like equilibrium. And then the COVID hit. And I remember the first time she felt the COVID back in 2020, and it was February of 2020. It was right after I released my last book, which I, is off the market now because I'm revising it. And she was shaking like a leaf. Like she got exposed to a virus that made her just shake and shake. And I'm like, holy, I thought, and I gave her a little bit of peanut butter earlier because she was, she, cause I was writing and she was just going all over the place. So I'm like, oh my God, here, take some peanut butter. Cause you're driving me crazy. Right. And then start shaking. I think, oh my God, I poisoned her with peanut butter. But no, it was the fact that maybe the peanut butter triggered whatever was incubating within. It wasn't like peanut butter was poison. But um, they didn't go over that much for anything like, but you know, people make causation equals correlation or correlation equals causation type of thing. But no, she started shaking. And then I realized that she was, uh, that she was electrolyte deficient and she needed not only salt, but she needed sugar, she needed food. But there was a whole bunch of things that she needed. She was going, she, her predispositions, the cytokine storm happened with her in 2020. That was the first kickoff for her. It was all the shaking. I gave her some of the J, just had some of the sugar in it or the jelly or the syrup. And it stopped the shaking. So she got regulated because it was all like, you know, she had a total sugar drop. And then I felt the sugar drops too, the last couple of years too, when I was dealing with different variants. And so she's been steadily dealing with this COVID. Every version that I get exposed to, she would get exposed to it too. And I said in the last video about the seizures and all the other stuff. And so it's building her back up to the environment. So that's the thing is that I had to let all the cytokine storm within her play out. I, if I were to put any kind of remedy or any kind of medication or anything else, it would take her down notches and notches and notches, especially in this environment, because the cures add more to the shit storm. And we had more of the shit storm, the tea storm, the, 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 the cures and all the things that cause the body to produce T cells and B cells as a defense against it because it's antibiotic or you're just holding back the dam of stuff, which is like the cures, like doing so much juice and all that stuff. You, then you, the, this, the, the entropy process accelerates. And so I have to, I had to allow the cytokine storm to just rear its ugly head and sh and I had to keep feeding it. And you see me just go back and forth from different foods, different foods, because now her, her personality has changed. Yes. She, her, I was in bed a lot for the last couple of weeks because of stupid COVID and all the different variants. She was in bed with me dealing with it too. We were both basically sick together, but we come into it, come out of it, come into it, come out of it, no, no, no. Okay. And so I'm finally, I mean, I feel now different when I get exposed. I feel the heat in the face. I'm blowing my nose and that's the extent of it. It hasn't gone any further than my first lines of defense. Well, she's now building herself up, but she's gone through two years. Well, I started her on the J juice doing a little bit back in 2017, 2018, but that wasn't the end of it. Just because I kickstarted certain things, it brought things up. Yes, there was a certain kind of cytokine storm, but this, this last one with this COVID, it woke up, um, it woke up everything that was in her body. It woke up everything in my body. I had the spleen headaches, body aches, the rashes, the hives. I, I, I lived in California. I live, you know, places if, if you're, if you're doing it with hanging out with people and whatever, and, and you know, AIDS is all over the place. You may be a carrier HIV, but not have the AIDS virus. Unless you test for it, you don't know. That's why people want to be tested for it. But like, I, don't know, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't worried about it. But we all hold things inside that when we were told that there is AIDS virus, there's Ebola, there's Hep A, there's Hep B, all these things. And you're around everybody and their mother exchanging, you know, microbes and you don't even know it. Or you're sharing food or sharing drinks and all that stuff. You're getting each other's DNA that has these specific programming. And so it, then it, it incubates. It finds a place in your body and incubates. Maybe it doesn't rear a duck head. You don't even know you have it. People, some people don't even know how they, they have herpes. 
but they may be carriers of it, but they don't know they have it because it never expressed itself. But you can be a carrier. Anybody can be a carrier because you've been exposed. We, we live in a communal world. We don't live hermetically sealed in our own little biodomes. We all share everything. Just simply going outside and breathing the air, we're sharing every little microbe we've ever, you know, we're exposed to. And so when this something as aggressive as COVID then wakes up the 29 proteins that wake up everything in the immune system, then you are experiencing the hives, the things that if you, you know, the symptoms of, of, of HIV. Now, unless you test for it, you would never know you had it. Because it would be just like, oh, I got a hive. Oh, I got a rash. Oh, I got a cold, like a flu, whatever. And so, so that's the thing. So she had to feel every single predisposition that she's ever had in her whole life and everything in her genetic line. Me too. And anyone else out there, you know, that hasn't felt the storm yet. So my husband had felt touches of the storm. He hasn't felt the full force of the storm yet because he has so much to him. He has such a strong immune system that it is holding that deluge back. When will it break? I I hope that he will handle, be able to handle the actual cytokine storm, the actual breakthrough infection. I hope that he'll be able to handle it. He's gone through some shit this last couple of years from it. Some pretty scary stuff that you think, oh gosh. But that's the thing. So the storm is coming for a lot of people. The storm came and went for a lot of people too. People on the J juice who got off it finally, who are not cured, because I know a segment of my J juice crowd still takes it and they're cured. They don't feel anything. They think this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh no, honey, just wait. That breakthrough infection is going to happen because you're not taking on substance. You're not evolving. And this dynamic environment, it's going to cannibalize you and you will have a cytokine storm and who knows if you survive it. But other people have gotten off the J-juice and they know how aggressive this environment is and they felt the storm and they're going to keep feeling it until their body levels up. That's the Hunger Games. That's the microbial hand-to-hand -hand combat that we're dealing with is that you now have to reconcile with not only everything that you have in your predispositions, but then you have to rethink of you want to hang out with all these people out there with all of their microbes that you then have to go and deal with when you come home and cough and spit and loogie and, and blow your nose because your body now is developing a defense against your friends and family. Then you don't want to hang out with people anymore. And, and, and then you, you know, then you're like, and, and you know, people's medical history, you know what they're going through. You feel bad because they can't help it. They're so deep into whatever they're doing that. And, and so you're just like, fuck. It really, it's, it's very, it's, 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 um, it's frustrating. Because I think people are beautiful, but I also know that I hate feeling like I have to defend myself against everybody in, in, in the world. But you have to, because now the immune systems have been activated to such a degree that you can't help now but rethink your movements or you become so cured and like a zombie you don't feel anything until the last second where your life flashes before your eyes and then you're gone you're just gone that's also the other side of it or you start seeing the rapid decline you get one diagnosis get a therapy another diagnosis another therapy another di and then you'll see that circus play out or I see people breaking bones. <laughs> they're falling apart, but they're still in the game. They're like, yeah, I'm still. It's like, you know, when a runner, he falls and he breaks his ankle. Or, oh, wait, wait, hold on. The gymnast, like Carrie Strug, she turned an ankle or did something. But Bella Caroli gave her the look and she did not quit. Though you felt you felt bad for the other lady that said, I'm not done. I, I don't blame her. Some of that shit's pretty death defying <laughs> but not really and so you know so so some people will still like do the same thing over and over again even when they're injured as if their coach was telling them it's life or death if you don't stay in the game if you don't finish out your routine 
And so that's how people have been bred to sacrifice themselves for the good of, 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 of the community, which, you know, you got to thank them because that's what they were taught. I mean, that's who's keeping our infrastructure going or those that are so cured and so, and, and you're like, and you, it's like you have this war inside where you want them to stay home more than not, but who's going to go in and run the steel? Who is going to be the truck drivers to run one steel place to another? That's why they're raising the pay for a lot of people. Because let me tell you, money talks. And if somebody is that greedy, needy, whatever, <laughs> and they have so much they have to feed and so much they have to pay for, well, okay. Okay. But you know what they're sacrificing? <laughs> right, Annie? But you know what they're sacrificing? They're sacrificing their life for you. Those are the people who are out there on the front lines, the grocery stores, the truck drivers, anyone that you see who's out in public, dealing with the public every single day. You thank them for their service. When I went to Walmart with my mask like tight against my face and I could barely breathe, and I'm like, I don't want to deal with anything coming out of this place. I looked at the lady, I'm like, just thank you for coming to work. Thank you for doing this job. Okay, Annie. Thank you. Because they're being hit by the public's moguls, left and right. And it is, and you, and you almost, you know, if, <laughs> at some point, when you finally get in tune with your immune system, and you feel every single variant, you're not going to want to work in the grocery store anymore. It's going to cannibalize you, Annie. Um, who is it? Tiffany. Tiffany Lee Krim. She got out of the waitressing because her, her, her patrons, she was getting such a reaction from working in a public environment. And that's what people are going to be left with. They're going to be faced with that. Either they save themselves and get out of the public or work or transition themselves out of the public and find a different job. They can work from home or whatever. Or they sacrifice themselves for their customers. They sacrifice themselves for their kids. They sacrifice themselves for their community. Those are the ones that you, that, that are willing to send. Because let me tell you, if you decide to leave the, the, the grocery industry, I think that's awesome. If you can strategize yourself out of the grocery industry, out of working out of the public, that's fucking awesome. It means you, you can strategize your way through anything if you can figure out how to get out of working in the public and knowing that you have to pay bills and do all this other stuff, which means that you are thinking ahead, you have laid out a plan, and it's going to work for you. You might have a little hard time, but you will figure out a way out. Some people don't have that, and so they're out there because they can't strategize themselves out of the industry. And so then you have to thank them and you know what they're going through. You know how much they're dealing with. And if they're not dealing with too much right now, or they won't admit it, which you don't need to admit it. It's not like, you know, they have to be a confessional, but you know, what's going to happen for them at some point, because who can work out there in the public without some kind of diagnosable condition and they'd be on some kind of therapy and then progressively on the downward trend. But it's not going to be stretched out like it used to be before COVID. It's going to be now shorter time in shorter intervals in between diagnoses and therapies. That's what's going on with the whole Georgia Guidestones. That's what's going on with this whole kickoff with things going on. I mean, we know aspects of it from the conspiracy world that there is a major reset going on. Even Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. We know all the activists against Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. But we also know we have bred so many humans that are not willing to evolve and adapt and who are resistant to new information. So what do you do? You can't force them. You can't legislate morals. And so this is probably the only way. And this was well thought out. And the way they kicked it off and the options you have for delivery services, the options you have to work from home, the options you have to move from one place to another, there's so many options for you, for anyone to survive this or get rich off it. And then they will be sacrificed because let me tell you, when you are so greedy for money out there, 
yeah, you'll take on the jobs that people are like dying from that can't handle it. But some people are, are very, very strategic. They're making a good amount of money and they're working from home. I think that's great. If you can work from home and not have to deal with anybody face to face, that's great. But nowadays with telemarketing, I, I couldn't do telemarketing today. I'd be hung up on left and right. Everyone's afraid of scammers as well as they should be. I don't even answer my phone anymore. So I couldn't do the telemarketing today. I did it 10 years ago, but I could not do the telemarketing today. So, so you better have something established where somebody else is working for you and you're at home. Okay. Because <laughs> I mean, or you're working at a call center or you're working as a who knows what customer service or you're selling mortgages or you know things that you can just do online where you're tied to a you know a company centralized phone where you see the phones come out of a you know out of a company where people are like oh it's not some scammer but even then i mean so or you work for a bank and, and you work, you know, you work from home. So if you can work from home and you can tele telemarket from home or telecommute from home, that's great. Start getting your computer skills up, typing skills up, start getting your resume figured out, find a way to transition out of the public because the public will cannibalize you. That's the rapture. That's the rapture that the Christians are talking about. It's where people don't realize how aggressive the environment is and they just fall over dead. I heard so many sirens today. There were so many ambulances and fire trucks. And they were like back to back today. And I'm just like, oh, Lordy. It's either an accident. Someone wasn't paying attention because of who knows what. Under the influence or whatever. Or someone suffered some kind of diagnosable condition. And it was emergency late related. The lady across the street from me, she passed away. Actually, back in February. And I would, she had the ambulance from her house a few times. Other people down the street <laughs> passed away. I mean, that's the thing. That's the rapture. And then once you decide to recalibrate your system and be more sensitive so you can release the mucus, you're not going to want to go back to work, Annie. <laughs> because you will be blowing your nose and coughing every single time you come into work. Your boss is going to say, you need to go get a V or you need to go get some, you need to stay home until you're better and go take some NyQuil, which, and maybe at this point, some of these variants are not going to, that, that won't, the NyQuil won't work as a cure, but you don't want to do that. But then if you don't, then you'll be out for a while because it's going to wake up other things. There'll be a domino effect. Okay. And you have the skin issues come up and you have the rashes and the hives and, and the fever and the, and the throbbing headache. And then all of a sudden, you're just like, dude, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I thought about, you know, if my husband, anything happened, you know, what would I, I'd figure it out. <laughs> I'd figure it out. I don't know. I'd figure it out. I'm hoping he can hold out. But here's the thing. I mean, even if he did have to deal with some shit. You get to deal with some stuff, you know, I would, I would go out there. I would battle it out. I would deal with whatever I would find a way to deal with it and, and find a way to just blow my nose all the time and feel the heat. Maybe today I could do it because I feel the heat right now. I feel the heat coming right to my face around my head. I feel it. It's a trip. And maybe I would have to blow my nose in the morning and pack up stuff. But I'd figure it out. I mean, there's strategies to everything. But he needs to hold out for 10, 20 years. 20, 20 years seems like a long freaking time. I hope he doesn't have to. I hope he finds a way to go to a different job in the next 10 years, less than that. Where he's not on the truck. He goes into an office or something. But whatever. Right now we're just taking it as it comes but I mean that's the thing you guys is you gotta oh I'm so hot right now god I just got a huge heat I'm saying it's pretty intense out here 
So just think about it, you guys. Cytokine storm. It's now or it's later. When it's later, it might kill you. If it's now, you might have some kind of control over it and can deal with it. But if people wait to, to deal with the cytokine storms, like aggressively, the cytokine, not just the one that like, oh, a little breakthrough infection, I got COVID, big deal. No, the big one will come. And that's when someone's immune system really wakes up. And it's going to be a different level of energy for everybody. And if you try to suppress it, it'll get bigger later on. If you try to do preventative today, it'll rear its ugly head later on down the road. It's like pay now, pay later, or what's the other thing? Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Pay now, pay later, or it'll be, it'll be, if you deal with it now, it won't be as bad. I mean, it'll be bad relative to when you could have done it, but every day you wait not to bring everything up, the worse it's going to be. Thank gosh, I released a lot of stuff the last couple of years before the COVID, but it wasn't everything. So I remember I was cured. Yeah, you have the Lyme, and there'll be other things that you got to deal with, Annie. There'll be other things, believe me. But you don't want to be cured. Remember, J juice is supposed to be a catalyst. It's not supposed to be a cure. J juice is supposed to be a catalyst. So when you're doing J juice and you don't feel anything, then you have to get off the J juice. And you, and you got to be out there because you're going to have to God, I saw something. I don't know. Then you got that you can be out there. That was just the weirdest thing. I just saw it. I don't know. You got to be out there, and then you'll catch something that's going to wake up more stuff. I swear, I just saw something fly around, and it wasn't a bug, but whatever. I don't know. And I remember I felt the heat too. Okay, it was kind of weird. That was a little fucking creepy. I'm sorry, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. So you you got to feel stuff. So. Even when I, when, when COVID came around, I didn't deal with everything because I was more cured than not on the JJ. And you don't want to be cured on the JJ because you'll lose substance, you'll lose intelligence, you won't evolve, and the environment will, will cannibalize you. And so at some point, people will have to deal with the cytokine storm sooner because later on, it'll be worse. People won't survive it. And that's what you're seeing in the elderly. They did not prepare themselves to deal with an aggressive environment because they didn't know it was going to be this way. Who knew that 2019 was going to kick off the way it did? Who knew that 2020 was going to kick off the way it did? Nobody can predict these things except for the people who, who developed it. Okay, so... And so you don't want to end up to be that much at a deficit and then do a Hail Mary. That's what happens to people in palliative care and in hospice is when the system can't do anything more for you, any therapies or cures or surgeries or whatever. And then they're like, oh yeah, I'll do J juice now. <laughs> and I've had people come to me when they were in hospice, in palliative care, they were denied the last surgery to help them get rid of a, of a cancer. They were denied the surgery because it'd be too invasive and it was, and they were too obese. They're like, we're not going to do it for you. And they're like, Hey, Jillian, can you help me out? Here I am going like, Oh my God, I could save the world. And they fought me on every single time and they still passed away. You know why? Because they couldn't handle the Hail Mary. It was like, they already had four feet. They had their hands and their feet in the grave. They were already laying down in the grave and they wanted me to pick them up. And they're, you know, and they were, there was no way I was going to pick them up out of the grave and carry them to the promised land. There was no way that was going to happen. And so while they, they attempted to do the last Hail Mary of their life, that was the same thing with Bruce Wilmot. He tried to attempt to do the last Hail Mary, but he was so emaciated and it was hard for him to eat. It, and I, there's so many things that people, well, yeah, anyways. 
And so you don't want to end up on either end of the spectrum being a hospice in palliative care, whether obese or emaciated. So you've got to deal with this shit before it becomes something that you won't want to deal with to where then you will end up in palliative care. Hey, sugar. Sugar's coughing. Yeah, I, I saw a little spirit in here and then I felt the heat. So anyways, I'm going to go. But I just said, you know, this is the thing. Cytokine storm, the J-juice, the J-juice will preempt it. And then life has got to change for you. Or you wait for a breakthrough infection from a very aggressive variant that will then trigger your cytokine storm. And some people don't survive it. Some people kind of survive it. That's Russian roulette. If you don't preempt your own cytokine storm, then you're waiting for the world to do it for you and you may not survive it. That's the scary part of what's going on in this world today. And you won't know how bad it is until either it happens to you or you see one of your friends and family just drop before your very eyes or they go down progressively. They fought the good fight. I'm taking my dog out. All right, bye.